Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Fire Brigade of Flames, chapters 143 through 146. We are doing four chapters today because I have been super fucking busy and have not gotten a whole lot done, uh, or was busy for when the last, like, four chapters all came out, uh, thanks to the whole Pusu Pusu backup um, of the past few months. Uh, but yeah, we're here. Uh, when we last left off, um... The Nataku turned into this, or got, got made into this giant monster thing as a result of both uh, Ritsu and Haumea. Um, and then Corona was like, this guy's above my pay grade, and like, noped out of there. Um, and then uh, one of Nataku's like, laser beams was about to kill Shinra uh, before Charon showed up, saved Shinra because he needs all the pillars alive for the preacher's plan. Uh, and is now teamed up with Shinra at the moment. So yeah, let's jump right into our four chapters. I do have a water bottle over here because I plan to be talking for a while because we have four chapters to cover tonight, people. This is going to be a long one. Hopefully, hopefully it'll all be under an hour, uh, but we'll see how things go. So our cover picture is like a parody of like a Godzilla movie poster. Uh, the atomic monster Nataku now rises. Uh, chapter 140, that should be 3, not 142. Uh, the Legend of the Legendary Sword. Our stand later page. We open right where we leave off, right where we left off last time, uh, with Nataku, like, roaring and, like, raging in his gigantic monster form. Grrrr! What is that giant infernal? Damn, how maya. She can't resist pro pro provoking everything in sight. And uh, In Inka's also watching on. Such powerful radiation. So dangerous. It seems Haumea managed to get into the Sixth Pillar's head. And uh, Inka just like stares at, uh, at Ritsu. Um, I wouldn't stand there if I were you. Oh, right. She's she's uh, not staring at uh, at Ritsu. She's staring at the like, the fire line going through um, uh, Ritsu's body. What, seriously? And... Um, Inka pulls uh, Ritsu to the side, right as a laser beam um, uh, comes like right through where uh, Ritsu was standing. How are we supposed to capture the sixth pillar in such a situation? It's perfectly dangerous, right? Great work, Haumea! I, I love Inka so much. Um, and now we have Charon and uh, Shinra getting ready to fight, um, what's his face, Nataku. I'll cover you. Use your speed to rescue the sixth pillar. That was my plan, even if you didn't protect me. Blah, blah. Oh, Corona has not actually left yet. Okay. His heart is too young. Why try in vain to strengthen the weak? Uh, meanwhile, with Nataku, he's having a vision of, uh, of Rekka. That was incredible! Incredible power! Come on, you can keep doing it if you try! Uh, and then we ha cut to Victor, uh, looking up in shock. We're fine for now, but... If the radiation rate continues to increase, we'll have major problems. Uh, meanwhile, again with the meanwhile, we're just cutting all over the place. Um, Arthur and Vulcan are driving back to confront Haumea. Damn, the situation can, can get worse at any moment. You need to get there as soon as possible, Arthur. Get where? To do what? This is your chance, Arthur. To become the legendary knight. Oh, just what Arthur always needs to hear. Really? For real? The legendary knight? Me? You said legendary and knight. Calm <laughs> down. He's like shaking, uh, shaking um, Vulcan all over the place. Calm down. Don't knock us over. I know a place where you can become that legendary knight. But are we there yet? Where is it? Uh, and then Vulcan puts Arthur on top of the matchbox. Okay, now you're a real knight. You want me to stand atop the matchbox? Is this another trick? Like your skull mask or robots? Would I lie to you? Trust me. Do you see the hole in the middle of the hatch? Yeah, right there. Shove your Excalibur into it. You've heard that story before, right? The one about a legendary knight who inserted the legendary sword? The story of the legendary knight who inserted the legendary sword! <laughs> I added a machine underneath the hatch to harness the plasma coming off of Arthur's Excalibur. If we can amplify that plasma, create a pseudo-electromagnetic pulse attack that'll disrupt the hood's electromagnetic wave. Alright, it he, he has a good strategy. Hang on, that's not how the story goes. The legendary knight pulled out the sword, not inserted it. You're trying to fool me. Damn, he knows too much. Got, was Vulcan, 
Vulcan was there for the China arc, right? He saw he saw Arthur's like encyclopedic knowledge of anything vaguely vaguely relating to uh the Arthur the King Arthur story, right? <laughs> the whole like he knows all the digits to pi just because. Uh but Vulcan has no time for this shit. Just shove it in now, then take it out immediately. Uh, and Arthur like looks at him. Vulcan, what are you saying? Are you an idiot? You're the legendary knight. You already have the legendary sword, but you didn't acquire it in the right way. You can only claim Excalibur by, by pulling the sword out of the stone to become a legitimate legendary knight. You don't want to miss this chance, do you? And Arthur, like, freaks out in shock. Oh, so you mean this small gift, which has always been by my side, was the legendary weapon all along? Small gift? How much, is, how much does Arthur value his Excalibur? It's hard to understand his thought process. Yeah, sure, what you said. Hmm. Hmm. Can this really make me the legendary knight? Yes. Yes, you can. I understand. I understand it all. And he, gets, he holds a sword above his head. Um. I am stupid! <laughs> or is, is that Vulcan talking or is that Arthur? Uh, either way, Arthur, like, plunges his sword into the little hole. EMP! Amplified! Um, we see, like, the energy wave, like, radiate from the matchbox. A power surge? The conflict against the Eighth hasn't stopped. Uh, and Haumea, Haumea notices her powers are failing. Urgh, damn, that plasma user again. Vulcan and Arthur did it! Maki is, like, breathing a sigh of relief. Was that some electromagnetic interference? How dare they, and how dare they disrupt my venomous electromagnetic wave? And he, like, she, like, jumps after... I don't know if she's going towards Maki or towards, um, towards Arthur. I'll asphyxiate whoever did this. Then I'll get back into that boy's head again. So, did, did, this, did that calm down? Did that calm down, um, 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 what's his face, Nataku? Because I, I didn't think it would. Uh, but Arrow, Arrow kind of saw this all coming. I knew we should have stopped when we were ahead. Oh, no, you won't! Uh, and Maki yells at her. But that EMP also disabled the Iron Owls. I understand what's going on. Oh, and the Dominion Lady is helping out. All right. So I have to go fight that crown-wearing delinquent on my own, huh? The EMP didn't affect your puppet? Did you forget? I move my Dominions with fire, not electricity. Uh, and Haumea shoots, like, a little lightning bolt at, um... At, like, a pillar? Uh, and jump... Oh, she, like, magnetizes it and jumps to it. That's cool. There? Oh, I, I guess, I guess once the EMP, the EMP only cut off what Haumea was currently doing, and now what she is, uh, is now doing is not really as effective, I guess. Uh, so yeah, she looks at the matchbox, and she readies, like, an electromagnetic orb, and one of the Dominions flies at her, and, like, slices at her, and she, like, jumps off the pillar. Don't interfere! Uh, and Vulcan notices all this happening. The Hoods figured this out? Vulcan, can I pull it out now? Not yet! You got the you got the legendary swords. So don't pull it out so soon. Uh, okay. By the way, Vulcan, why does the great stone in which I'm holding the legendary sword have a driver's seat? Hey, whoa! <laughs> he like drives off with Arthur still on top. What sorcery is this? I've never seen a big stone move this fast. Uh, and um, so like some beeping comes in on uh on Vulcan's headwear, I think. Oh no, hold up. The EMP is still, is still, um, still activated. So how is, how is Haumea using her powers? I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. The strength of the electromagnetic field is falling. Damn. Arthur's nightly, nightly delusion is failing. Arthur, the big stone where you put the sword is actually the back of a serpent. Don't fail. Um, and we see Arrow ready her arrow to go and, like, strike, um, Vulcan and Arthur. A serpent? There. Right as planned. She'll use her ability. Oh, he's gonna, like, piggyback off Vulcan. Serpent, dead ahead! D damn And she's, like, driving back and forth, trying to, like, block- trying to, like, distract Arrow. Or, like, make Arrow miss. I missed. And yeah, Arrow's Arrow, like, misses. Arrow's Arrow. Alright. I felt something fly past us. Cursed serpent! I won't let go so easily. I am the kingly knight, and I refuse to fail! I'll now unleash the legendary sword! Uh, and then, uh, Vulcan gets another note from his head ge headgear. Radiation level rising. Shinra, do something before it's too late. Should Arthur unleash the sword? Now the fight is in the hands of a hero. 
So they continue in chapter 144, Pressure. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure what exactly, um, how the EMP is going to, like, deal with the radiation level or the fight with Nintaku at all besides deflecting Haumea. But I guess we'll see in the three more chapters we have. Let me just quick sip of water real fast. Ah, three chapters to go. All right. So our cover page is, um, sorry, almost spilled my water. We're all good. Uh, is of a flame human. Uh, let your body and your soul burn to ash. Chapter 144, Pressure. Uh, cover page, or stand later page. All right. So we're back with, uh, Shinra, who is dodging laser beams from Nataku. Stop Nataku's fury. Shinra versus Charon versus Korono. That ended a while ago. Uh, but a laser beam is heading straight for Shinra, and Charon blocks it. I got you covered. Get going, fire rat. Um, and Shinra, like, blasts off with his, like, flame feet. Uh, and ends up high above Nataku and all the little, like, laser circles. While Charon draws Nataku's attention. But then the lasers turn on, uh, Shinra. And he, like, deftly dodges all their laser beams. And blasts off toward Nataku. With my authentic rider kick. Let's go! And he, like, flies down towards Nataku. And hits him in the head. And, like, is deflected off. Damn, it's too hard. Ah, uh, get away from me! Uh, and then we cut back to Vulcan. The radiation's not going down, it's actually going up. If things continue like this, Shinra, we're going to be in serious trouble. Calm down, Takun! He's giving Nataku a nickname, alright. Ah! And, uh, Nataku is still just screaming. No, expect nothing more from me! Oh, they're in Adora! Adora Link! Don't expect anything else! And, uh, Nataku is still, like, freaking the fuck out. Uh, and we cut to a, a Nataku flashback, I think before he met Rekka, even. Another 100. You're going to be a great doctor, just like your father. You're great, Nataku. Please always keep trying. No, Mama. It's because you expect this from me. After all, when I got a bad grade... And it cuts to, uh, Nataku's mom, like, crying over a test grade. Ah, uh, what am I going to tell your father? Ah... Uh, uh, that, that is one hell of a way to start your child, Nataku's mom. Alright. I'll, I'll try harder next time. I'll become a good doctor, just like my father. I can do it. And I can't wait for what the future holds. Uh, and then it cuts to Nataku's mom talking to some, like, Hajima goons, I think. It can't be. Nataku was a third generation? And now you want to take him to Hajima? Uh, and Nataku's mom goes to, like, comfort, uh, Nataku. Takun, you'll come home really soon. You won't lose your firepower, right? You can do it, right? Uh, and we have a flashback within the flashback. This happened because you didn't take care of him. How can you call yourself his mother? I'm assuming that's uh, Nataku's dad, who honestly, going by his lower body, kind of reminds me of Korono, almost? Though I know it can't be. Uh, I can. You can? I can. Wait, what is what is this? A puppet, Nataku? What's going on? Measurements have been calibrated. All components are optimized. The guinea pig's heartbeat is normal. Okay, let's begin the, the experiment, Nataku-kun. Get us some good results today. Is Nataku just a human puppet? You can do it. Okay, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And his mother, like, turns into Rekka in his mind. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, and then he, we have another flashback up to, uh, him meeting Korono for the first time. You'll be working with me today, your Uncle Shinigami. This may kill you, but you can handle it, right? Yes, I can. I can. You can count on me. I can do this. I need, uh, and he sees his mother in his mind. Oh, I need to be smart. I need to be strong. Uh, and then Shinra appears. Takun. Takun, calm down. Listen to me. Uh, and we're out of the Adora Link. What? What did you do? What was that feeling? Stop it! Stop looking inside of me! Uh, and he has a laser going like, blast Shinra. It's going to be okay. I know you're strong. So don't let yourself get swallowed by the power of the flames. Oh, really? Okay, I'll do it. Yes, I can! Is it as simple as that? Is it as simple as, like, the yes I can conditioning? I'll send this city flying through the air! No, wrong fucking answer, Nataku! 
Wrong fucking answer! Stop! Uh, and the laser beam, like, lights up. Uh, we cut back to Vulcan. The radiation's increasing rapidly. This is too dangerous! Hey, get out of there! Uh, and Charon, like, watches, like, almost nonplussed. Hey, hey. Seriously. What absurd energy. This isn't very funny. Uh, and we have Ritsu, who, like, looks on in shock. Uh, I see it. His power will create a crater. 500 kilometers in diameter. No way! If it's that big, we cannot run it! I can do it. I'll do it! No, you idiot! Uh, and the laser beam blasts off. Will Tokyo be erased? Expectation, pressure, irritation. A lightning capable of destroying all this? Is there any escape from this desperate situation? To be continued, chapter 145, Human Shield. Alright, my theory on that chapter title, someone is going to die as a shield for the city somehow. I don't know who it's going to be, but I think someone's going to die next chapter. That's my theory. Uh, mainly because we're almost 150 chapters into the series with no major character deaths whatsoever, you know? Like, everyone tends to turn out okay. Um, except, except Rekka. Rekka died, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, this chapter, uh, the fight go going off was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know how to take that quick puppet Nataku scene. My first thought was that he's not a person, and all of his memories have been, like, implanted, but I don't think that quite seems right. I don't know how how a puppet could be a pillar, but whatever. We're moving right on into 145 with another sip of water, because I'm getting really thirsty. All right, moving right along. Uh, we start right where we left off. Nataku is screaming. Uh, Nataku has fired his heat ray. Is there nothing that can be done? Is Tokyo going to be destroyed? Uh, Inka and Ritsu uh, look on. If the heat's radius reaches the ground, it'll create a 500-kilometer crater. There's nowhere to run. Uh, and Shinra... Shinra, like, smiles, like, scary out of his mind. He actually fired his ray... Fired off his radioactive ray. I don't know what to do. There's nothing we can do. And the blast is the cover page. Chapter 145, Human Shields. Uh, and, uh, Vul uh, not Vulcan. Victor, uh, Obi, I think, and Iris all look on. What is that light? Sister, get back. No, no, no. It's no use. We have nowhere to go. Uh, and hey, Tina, I haven't seen him in a while. We need to retreat. But where can we go? Uh, and the blast is headed straight towards Charon, and Corona is also looking on. I am a guardian! Yes, I can. And we have Nataku with Rekka in his mouth. I have. Yes, I can. I know I can. I have the power. I can send this city flying through the air. Straight through the air! Uh, and. And Shinra, like, watches the beam. As Charon. Is Charon gonna die? Uh, cause Charon is still- still in front of the beam. I am a guardian! Charon! And Charon, like, holds his hands in front to, like, try to, like, tank the beam. I can't lose Haumea. I can't lose Inka. I can't lose Shinra or Nataku. No, what is he doing? This one's called my reflective Charon reflect power. Uh, and he takes the full brunt of the blast. Charon, holy shit. Uh... As the ground craters around him. Holy shit. Go! We see his eye. Oh, the headband's getting torn. Uh, and, Re and Inka looks on laughing. <laughs> now things are getting interesting. Hame is also laughing. <laughs> Did I ever do it? It's as if the pillar and their protector were in a three-legged race. Now's your chance to make up for what I did, Charon. Uh, what does she mean? How is- Oh, he's like, because he is her protector. Alright. Um, Charon continues to, like, hold back the beam. Um, we have a flashback of him talking as a much younger and, like, thinner man, talking like a baby Haumea. Haumea, will you please listen? Shut up, you're so annoying. How to raise a good child? Oh my god. Charon, I already know what you're planning. And he, like, kick- And she, like, kicks him in the nuts. So stop thinking only about only me. Damn, my, la my life's flashing before my eyes. Why am I remembering Haumea? I'm supposed to be a stern bodyguard. This haiki reminds me of, like, Noro and Edo from, uh, Ghoul. 
and that's why I'll defeat you. And at this point, he's like, his top has completely, like, been blown away, not even torn off, to protect the pillars. And everyone looks on in, like, utter, sh uh, like, shock or uh, whatever the fuck's going on through Inga's mind right now. And he holds the beam above him, and it shoots straight up in the sky. Did Charon survive? No, Char Charon's gonna die after that, right? Uh, Shenra barely dodges it. Unbelievable. He repelled it. And Charon is, like, lying, fa like, face up in a crater. And he, it heads towards the moon. I swear to God, is Charon about to destroy the fucking moon? Oh my god. All the way to the moon. How did he do that? And Charon is just, like, breathing heavily. I stopped the sixth pillar. Now I can't move. And Nat Nataku is not pleased by this at all. I can't tell if that little, like, dot on the moon is the beam headed towards the moon, or uh, the the beam's impact on the moon. Anyway, uh, Corona just looks at it, utterly nonplussed. Dangerous. Too dangerous. The city's weaklings were almost eliminated in just, in just one blast. You tried to take them all away from me. And he stares down Nataku. And I needed the special permissions from the corporation. Don't try to stop me, Korono-san. I need to do this. And Korono's bandages like come off his arm. And his blade comes out. And he slices off Nataku's uh, ash form's arm. Uh, and he like gets down into a battle stance. Ow! My arm! Korono? No, he can't. He seeks weakness. Now begins an adult's lesson to teach this child who's grown stronger. To be continued, chapter 146, Boys Be Weak. Oh, boy, 140, 145, there is no way anything's topping what the fuck Charon just did anytime soon. Holy shit. All right, uh, we're going to move right along to our final chapter of the night, I think. Unless 147 gets like, watch 147 be posted right now, I swear. Uh, let me get a quick sip of water real fast. All right, um, sorry about that. One more time, one final chapter. Um, our cover page, Space Fire Force, chapter 146, Boys Be Weak. Korono, the craziest person in the Empire, faces off against an out-of-control Nataku. I'm disappointed in you, Nataku. You're hopeless. Please, don't say that! Uh, Nataku, and Korono, like, jumps at Nataku. I can do it too! And with his other arm, he smashes, he tries to like smash at, um, at Korono, but Korono makes a cut somewhere below Nataku's main body. Like, like, bisects him. I can beat you! At least I think I can do it! Uh, and the body like falls, si falls to the ground. He spliced apart the giant infernal! It's not as durable as a demonic infernal, but it's still pretty tough. Super tough. Uh, and he has an image of his, uh, Nataku has an image of his mother, like, seeming, like, dead. You'll do it, won't you, Takun? You're my pride and joy. Yes, I'll do it! Uh, and his mom cries. It's okay, mom. Don't worry. You can count on me. I got this! And his body is, like, sliced up by Korono. Uh, and it, like, starts to fade away. Ugh, ugh. And Nataku, uh, like, tears streaming down his face. Just leave it. To me, uh, the image of Rekka. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. <coughs> I, I, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, and Nataku, like, glares as Korono, like, launches a slash against, right against him and walks up to, and walks, slowly walks up to Nataku, who is at this point completely, like, motionless. I need to do this. I need to do this. Mom is counting on me. I can do it. Wait, Corona! And Corona, like, dissipates the ash form and grabs Nataku by the throat. Uh, and Nataku just glares out at him. Ugh, let go of me! corono san I'm not just... I... I can do so much more! I'll get stronger! I need to show you! I'll do it! It's useless. Why? You want something from me, right? Like the Adora Burst. Please, I can do it. I can... Become so much more than this. Enough. 
But why? Don't get any stronger. Uh, and, and Corona, like, puts them on the ground. What are you saying? I like to torment the weak. And you're only a child, right? So don't get any stronger. So you don't expect anything more of me? I want to be, I want to do, I want to become. If people think that way, yes, they will become strong. There, is Okubo about to make me, make me, try to convince me of some, like, parental bond between Korono and Nataku? Because I'm not buying it. But you have no reason to hurry. You need to appreciate your weakness that makes me torment, makes me to torment you so badly. It's priceless, but also fleeting. So keep being weak. This is the first time you said that to me. My parents always expected so much from me. Always telling me, Nataku, you can do this. And if I couldn't, they'd be so disappointed. I was terrified this would happen. And that the madman inside me was getting stronger. Ignoring what I felt. You're still only a child. So it's not a problem if I'm weak? Uh, and Nataku just like, tears streaming down his face. Not a problem at all. It only makes me want to torment you more. Yeah, the pathos of this is not working out for me at all. Uh, and Nataku, like, like, kneels, prostrates himself in front of Corono, and Corono puts his foot on his head. Thank you so much. Uh, and, um, uh, Vulcan, Vulcan, that's what I'm talking about, uh, gets an alert on his little visor. The radiation level is falling. Corono stopped him. Uh, and Charon is not dead. All right. I fully thought Charon would die there. 99% of people will think it's a strained relationship, but the remaining 1% think it's the best case scenario. That man is the guardian of the sixth pillar. Are they about to join the White Hoods? Let's leave the sixth pillar with Hygema for now. Besides, I'm exhausted. So, so hold up. Hold up. That means nothing, nothing happened in this arc. Well, well, no, I, I don't think Shinra's gonna leave them with, with, the, with Hygema. Um, though the fact, the fact that Charon and the gang have no problem leaving, um, leaving, uh, Nataku with Hygema does high-key imply that there's a lot of shady dealings going on with, between Hygema and the White Hoods. Uh, but Inka just smiles and looks at Nataku, um, and... Inka gets that crazy look in her eyes. Yes, you can stay here for now, but I see what your future holds. And Nataku looks at Inka in, like, utter fear. Uh, and Karon, Inka, and Ritsu are, like, covered in, like, a ball of fire and disappear. Uh, and we cut to Vulcan in the matchbox. They're gone? So ended the battle between Hygema, the Eighth, and the White Hoods. There were 32 deaths. The official story was that an experiment involving the Adora Burst went badly. There's now a huge crater on the moon, but since people back here on Earth already dealt with, glo with global destruction caused by the Great Disaster, they don't seem to care much. G Charon fucking threw a crater at the moon! Fucking hell, Charon! How, how are we ever going to beat Charon at any point in this series? Charon is fucking immortal at this point. Charon, Charon is a man. Charon is a man's man, and I love him. The children are still inside Hygema, but the Eighth asked Hygema to stop such experiments in their attempts to awaken the Adora Burst. Still, the one who stopped Nataku turned out to be none other than Korono. From here, I can't really do anything but look forward. Korono is really off his rocker, yet he seems capable of keeping Nataku's feelings in check. Charon did also say that together they could be a bodyguard in the pillar. We were trying to investigate. We we're trying to have an investigation to keep Lixon from getting killed and to find the connection between the Preacher and Hygema. But after these events, any connection, any evidence of some connection seems weak. Other than the fact that Charon just left, left a pillar with Hygema. What the fuck? There's a connection right there. Afterwards, Lixon, the commander, and I were called by Hygema to discuss what happened. Uh, and the man lets the men come in. And in there is Gleo Hygema, to be continued in Chapter 147, Oath. All right, that was our four chapters. We did it. We did it. Half an hour of Fire Brigade. We fucking did it. Oh boy, what fun chapters these were. God, this was such a good, good four chapters. Holy hell, Fire Brigade is so good. Please, 
I really hope the anime is still reading, reading this fucking manga. It's so good. Such a good series. Um, and th th these chapters are all the reasons why it's so good. Oh boy, just these fights from... Admittedly, admittedly, um, I was kind of disappointed that the Maki and Dominion and Hamea stuff kind of got left by the wayside by the end. Um, but still, you know, Charon, Charon, the, like, just, like, moving that, like, uh, directing that blast to the moon? Leaving a 500-kilometer crater on the moon? Oh, boy! I, 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 I fuck! This fucking series! This fucking series is so good! God! Ah! So good! But yeah, um... Oh, so much happened. I still don't know what to make of that puppet Nataku bit we get. Maybe it's just that he's like a marionette and that he's constantly repeating the I can thing. Um... And I don't quite know why... So how how it seemed like when Haumea was running after Arthur, she wanted to like restart her connection with Nataku, but Nataku was still per, like permanently impacted by Haumea, or not permanently, but you know, the EMP didn't really stop Haumea from interfering with that fight, uh, or it didn't really stop her already happening interferences from interfering anymore. I guess is the word I want to say. Um, but still, God, everything with Nataku, uh, Corono, you know, uh, just destroying the, uh, the infernal form, um, the ash form, we're gonna call it, because it looks like a giant body of ash. Um, and it looks like Corono and Nataku will be sticking around, um, into future arcs, given that, uh, he is now, in, in the eyes of the White Hoods, the bodyguard of the sixth pillar. Um, again, I do, especially after this chapter, think that there is some serious connection between um, uh, Hajima and the White Hoods, even if uh, Shinra seems not to think so. Just because, like, they left a pillar with Hajima. There's some connection going on there. Uh, but yeah, and now we have the epilogue of the arc as uh, Victor, Obi, and Shinra meet up with Glio Hajima. Uh, for some kind of shady meetings. Uh, we'll see how that goes whenever 147 gets translated. Uh, but I'm going to leave this off here. Hope you all stuck around for this half an hour video. And hope you all enjoyed the four chapters and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or do whatever the fuck you want. I don't really care. And as always, people, keep kicking ass and I'll see you in the future. Bye.